Social hacking. I use this strategy on Twitter to get more engagement and more followers. Now we're not actually breaking any rules or doing any hacking per se, but uh, we are using leverage to our advantage when creating long form content on X. And I just wanna show you guys what this sort of post looks like. As you can see, it's a long form on Twitter, but as you can see, uh, there's a lot of value packed into this post. It is obviously a long form and a lot of work went into this post, but ultimately it paid off in the sense that I got 3,500 views, I got eight retweets, and I got 63 likes and 42 saves. So that is some great engagement for me. Those numbers are outstanding for my tweets. So it was definitely worth putting this sort of thing together, but now I'm gonna basically walk you guys through on how to even start making a post like this. Like, where do you start? What do you do? And yeah, so basically there's three elements that go into this whole process of social hacking. So let's go ahead and start talking about the first one. So the first thing you're gonna do is study a big creator. So as you can see, I studied Stein Norman. He has almost 9,000 followers at the time of recording this, and basically he is an influence in my niche. So there's three elements that go into this first fact that we're talking about here. Number one, the person you study has to be in your niche. They have to have a large audience and they have to have an active audience. So when I say a large audience, I'm talking at least 10,000 followers and they really just need to be well known in the community for your niche. So the next big thing that you need to focus on after finding a creator is to leverage your findings from that creator. So what you wanna do is basically go to their free content or go to a paid course that they offer and you're either gonna buy that course or you're pretty much just gonna consume as much content as possible from the creator that you're studying. If you're just starting out with this type of content on Twitter, I think it's important to just go with the free courses or the free giveaways that they're doing and really just study that content because you can always buy their paid content later if you want to find out more information. But yeah, like I said, with step number two here, you want to leverage what you learned. You want to take all the content that you consumed and basically start to gain the knowledge from it and really start applying it to your own routine. And that's where the term leverage comes in is because you're actually learning as you're putting together this post. So it's really a win-win for you because you're not only learning more content, but you're also creating output for a piece that you're going to publish on Twitter. So so that brings me to the third step of this process and that is putting together the long form post for the content that you've gained from the creator. And obviously I showed you this post before and how long it actually is. And it obviously saves the reader a lot of time because it took me you know, hours upon hours to just write this post and put it together correctly in the right formatting. But the course that I also got this information from was a paid course as well. So not only is the audience getting free value, but they're also getting it presented to them on a silver platter. So there's four bonus tips that I want to talk about in this long form section. And the first one I want to mention is a controversial hook. So I started off my post by saying Stein Norman scammed himself. I don't know what he was thinking. So basically I started out by saying like, what is this guy doing? What was he thinking? But my third line of the post says he provided too much value. So I basically turned it around by saying like, dude, what was he thinking? And then I said, yeah, he provided so much value to me. And then I basically introduced what I was talking about, how I took his $100 writer's workshop course. And then I was like, hey, here are five powerful writing habits you should start today. And um, yeah, so that's kind of how I introduced the whole post. And as you can see, I listed five powerful writing habits. So obviously that's what I'll be talking about. But yeah, you can use a similar formatting to me in that sense, just by starting off with something that catches people's eye. Like what, what is this guy talking about? And you also wanna find that balance where you're not sucking up to the creator, but you're really just complimenting them on their work and how it actually added value to your life. So yeah, moving on to the next part, make sure you guys use graphics and high quality graphics for the post as well. As you can see with the graphics that I I use. They're very professional. They're very high quality and they do take some explaining to do, but overall they're really good visuals for the content that I described in my post. You can use a max of four graphics for long form posts. I highly recommend you use every single one of those spots. But yeah, also make sure you have good formatting when you're putting together this post. You want to make sure that you're looking at your draft. You want to make sure it looks visually appealing to the audience and you want to make sure it's just put together in a nice way for the reader to be easily able to consume your content. 
And it's also important to know that you want to make sure you're DMing your close friends on Twitter before you actually release the post. The reason for that is retweets are very valuable. So you want to make sure that when the post goes live that you get as many retweets as soon as you can so it can get into more people's feeds and so you can get that good engagement right off the bat for right when your post releases. So always make sure you reach out to your close friend group on X, the people that you've been building connections with and stuff like that, and just say something like, hey, like I just put together this great post. It adds so much value. It comes out at this time on this day. I was wondering if you could engage with it and possibly retweet it if you're feeling generous. It's definitely more than likely if they're a good friend of yours that they will retweet it on their feed as well. But yeah, like I said, my post turned out very well. I, th I think it could have done even better if I would have marketed it more to my close friend group before I released it. However, I'm very happy with the results. And for my first one, I think it turned out pretty good. And just a few more things, always make sure to tag the creator you made the post on in your post so that they can see that you made the post. You might even get a retweet or a follow from that creator. In my case, I got a retweet, which did help out my engagement quite a bit. And also be sure to add a call to action at the end, because really the biggest reason why you're making a post like this is to get that call to action. So tell people to check out your bio, tell people to like the post, tell people to follow you. Because if they spent all that time reading your post, it's more than likely that they're gonna do those few things that you asked them to do if you added a bunch of value, which obviously you clearly are going to if you put in that much work. And I also did write a Medium article about this exact topic. I'll also leave the link to this Medium article in the description of this YouTube video. I'll also put the link to this article in the description of this video. But yeah guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.